All right, hello friends, Axel here. Welcome to the first of my series of Steam Deck related videos for things like how does this game play on deck and do I have a Steam input configuration? So, like I said before, in the unboxing video, we are going to start with Final Fantasy XIV. Now, for the most part, Final Fantasy XIV, I can get away with mostly just sticking with typical gamepad controls because this is an MMO that has very, very good controller support. However, there are some things that I do that are a little... I do a few uh, extra things with the config here. Um, first things first, we'll go over the... You'll see that I have the default action set here, and we have two action layers. I'll get to those layers in a bit. Uh, so first, just the default set. Uh, most of the controls are all just standard gamepad. I have the gyro on a mode shift so that when I hold down left bumper... You can tilt the gyro to zoom in and out, so that's mapped to the right joystick up and down for that, so you can zoom either with the stick or with motion control. Let go, no gyro then. And then also, right trackpad is bound as a mouse, you click it in, you'll see I also have gyro activated on that, and that is gyro to mouse when the left bumper is not held. So, um, for the most part, you know, you can use this for like interacting with the UI and whatnot if you want to. The main thing that I have this for, though, um, it, it, it is still nice for interacting with the UI sometimes, but the main thing for me is uh, Air Force One at the Gold Saucer. Now, on the original Steam controller, I had to do, like, a, I had, it like, a separate action set or layer something I don't quite remember, specifically to enable... Uh, regular cursor movement here, and then going with gyro stuff, because I would also use mouse uh, mouse stuff on the Steam controller for camera movement with that. It's kind of felt better. It, it's it's kind of a janky setup on my Steam controller, but since the Steam Deck has the pads and the sticks, I can just have all that on one layer on one action set, and it just works pretty well. So uh, let's also get to the action layers that I have here. Um, not sure what those are showing up on the camera. This is the first action layer is L2 D-pad. The second one is R2 D-pad. Those both basically do the same thing. So if I hold L2, that's how you activate like your cross hotbar actions. And then I uh, put my thumb on the right pad here. You'll notice there's no cursor now, but it now acts as a second D-pad. And then same thing if I hit the right, if I hit a R2, we have secondary D-pad. So this is nice for if you're going in, say, dungeons, for example, and you want to keep moving, but then also do one of your skills. So you can do that while moving, like so. So maybe a bit of a niche kind of use case, but I do actually really like having the right pad as an auxiliary D-pad for Final Fantasy XIV here. I also do it in Elden Ring and just other games where it's nice to have access to your D-pad actions while you're also moving around. So having that, uh, having those action layers on the triggers there does help. As for why I have two separate action layers for that, that's because with Final Fantasy XIV, when the cross hotbars you have R1 is going to be one cross hotbar there, L2 is another, double tap for another set, double tap the other side for another set. Then you can also do R2 into L2, and that activates that one. And this is why I can't just do a single action layer, because if I let go of, the, of L2 and I didn't have the separate action layers, the pad would be back to acting like a mouse. So that's why I have two action layers for that. It makes sure that everything works as expected. And as far as the configuration, I think that's basically everything that I do that's even somewhat complex. The most complex part of it is probably the action layers, and even that's not too bad. For the most part, other than that, it's just standard gamepad controls because, as I said, Final Fantasy XIV has excellent gamepad support. So yeah, not much else to really talk about here. So that's probably going to be it for this one. Um, I'm going to show a bit more gameplay after I wrap up my little talking segment here, depending on how much I did or did not do for B-roll during this. It's going to be some uh, full run of Air Force One, which, again, we have the 
right trackpad and gyro for that. It works very, very well. And also playing through a dungeon, showing off usage of the right pad as an auxiliary D-pad. My plan for the next video of this type is going to be Elden Ring or Dead by Daylight. One of those two. Um, Elden Ring is going to be much more in the vein of Final Fantasy where it's not too complex of a config. Dead by Daylight I go a bit more in depth with. Uh, one of those is going to, be going to be next. Don't know which one yet. Let me know in the comments below which of those you might want to see. Or if you have suggestions for other games that might benefit from a more nuanced input configuration. Do let me know in the comments. Let me know some of your favorite games to play on Steam Deck. Let me know some of your favorite games to do custom configurations for. Anyway, uh, with that being said, this has been Axel. Thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the gameplay footage, and I'll see you guys in the next one.